This is the Reflection of Perfection, the number one selection, TRP. Welcome back to Fight Night as we continue our salute to the 1996 United States Olympic men's boxing team. Next up on the list is the team's lightweight, Terrence Heat Calton. Calton made it to Atlanta by beating future Maryland State champion Jermaine Fields in the Olympic trials. Once he got to a Georgia, he lost to Chancho Chanchev in the semifinals to take home the bronze medal. Now, Calton made his pro debut on the undercard of Riddick Bowe versus Andrew Gallada on December 14, 1996, at the Convention Center in Atlantic City, against fellow rookie Victor Miller. Will Miller spoil the debut of Calton, or will Calton win his first fight? Let's find out. And you start on top, but if you lose, the whole world will see you, so you only can go down. So he's got to be on his, the best of condition. Well, there is young Terrence Coffin, who comes from Trenton, New Jersey, by way of Philadelphia, and the Joe Frazier Gym. In Philadelphia, you see his amateur record, 150 wins, 9 losses, no draws, 45 KOs. That was Terrence Coffin's record in the amateur ranks. Now he gets ready to make his professional debut, and we remind you, as we will all through the evening, when you see the records of the fighters tonight, they're being brought to you by The Ring, the Bible of boxing. It is The Ring? The, the Bible of boxing? You mean this? Victor Miller. 30 year old Victor Miller? The hapless opponent here. Let's see if he cooperates with. His amateur record is 184 and 16. For Victor Miller, wasn't all that bad. 184 wins and only 16 losses. Okay, can we get on with this? Miller shadow boxing. And his buffer. Welcome to an evening of world-class professional boxing brought to you by Main Events and Caesars Atlantic City in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This bug's for you. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. Larry Hazard Sr. Board members Stephen Katz and Gary Shaw. Deputy Commissioner John Greco. Chief Inspector is Sylvester Tyler. The Chief Physician Ringside, Dr. Charles Wilson. Attending Ringside Physicians, Dr. Eric Wormser. Dr. Yeah, Wormser. And Dr. Richard Snepper. The timekeepers will be Errol Curry and Roosevelt Gilbert. The three judges for this first contest. Oh, this is a stacked card. Joseph Pascal. We got Zab Judah on this card against Jose Luis Torres. We got Von Bean against Earl Talley. Your referee. Tim Witherspoon against Ray Mercer. Oh, here we go. Round bout in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing blue trunks and weighs in at 135 pounds. He comes to us from the Bronx in New York City. Let's welcome, making his professional debut, Mr. Genuine Miller. Genuine Miller. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white, trimmed with red letters. Also making his professional debut, he fights out of smoke in Joe Fraser's gym in Philadelphia, Philadelphia Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. He weighs 135 and three-quarter pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, from the U.S. Olympic team, a 1996 Olympic bronze, bronze medalist. medalist, making his pro debut, Terrence the Heat. Terrence, the Heat Cawthon. Steve, I've never received your instructions at all. I expect you to obey my commands. Change gloves. I refuse to obey your commands. <laughs> A pretty good heavyweight. Joe Fraser is in Cawthon's corner. Yeah. Oh, that was Joe Fraser. I thought I recognized him. Fraser, also a heavyweight, trains and manages Cawthon. Will you say the other one was? I have to Box. rewind a little bit. His son, Marvis, Marvis Frazier, the old uh, heavyweight. We didn't uh, have any near near the success that his father did in the 80s. <laughs> All right, ding, ding, round one. Quite find his way through the forest of Olympic scoring to that gold medal. Hopes to achieve gold in his professional career. At only 20, Terrence already has... Yeah, he was only 20 years old. And, and I've said it in every video so far, the Americans were sending college-age kids against these goddamn Soviet and Cuban, you know, men in their 30s that have been fighting for decades. The communist countries controlled the Olympics because they didn't pay their athletes the same way America did. 
The Soviets dominated hockey because they're professional players like nine months out of the year and was in the army. And they, I don't know what the hell Castro was doing in Cuba that the boxers never got paid so they could keep their amateur status. Whoa! Is that a slip? No, they called it a slip. And we got George Foreman on commentary. Who's uh who knocked out Joe Frazier to win the heavyweight title? So Calton's on southpaw and he's trying to keep uh, Miller honest with the jab. Now Frazier took the gold medal in '64, and Foreman took the gold medal in '68. New York State Golden Gloves champion and uh, national finalist a couple times in his amateur career. 1890. I'm told he won the New York State Golden Gloves. Awfully late to start a pro career at age 30, but uh, whatever obstacles might have stopped him along the way, he surely comes in with high hopes tonight. And a chance to get a lot of attention if he can spring an upset against Terrence Kaufman in his pro debut. That's what I'm saying. So this guy won the National Golden Gloves. And he's 30 years old. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, Kenny. Yeah, so Calton's pretty much trained by the Fraser family. Very good company. Marvis wasn't a bad boxer himself. Got rushed along a little bit in his professional career. Probably had a date with Larry Holmes too early. Mike Tyson. Yeah, I was about to say Larry Holmes and Mike Tyson. That's probably the coach input. like to smug it out. 17 seconds left in the round. Relatively uneventful round one of Terrence Coffin's professional debut. First of five fights tonight. First of five fights. All right, ding, ding, in a round one. All right, round two, fight. Coughlin showed a lot of good quickness, reflexes, but still an amateur, and he has to work out of his system. First of all, the punch count numbers as uh, our punch stand guys with the copy box warmed themselves up for the evening. Karen Coughlin landing 25 punches in the first round, only three. All right, so Calton took the first round, according to Harold Letterman. And you'll be seeing Harold Letterman scores for each round at the bottom of the screen as the evening goes on. I don't know. Calton's, like, punches are kind of like rabbit punches a little bit. Overhand right misses. Left hand misses. Hard right hand to the chest by Victor Miller. Hey, he may benefit by that more than you think. If you're fighting a fast guy, you've got to find ways to make him slow down. All I'm trying to do is hit him around the chest. George Foreman, always a huge fan of body blows. He loves those blows to the lung area that suck the wind. Come on. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gets him to back away without having to lay his hands on his phone off. <laughs> Sometimes when you train a young fighter like his parents, uh, they do so well in the gym. Sometimes they do funny things out in the fight, you don't know what to tell them because you know they have it. Why won't he just do what we what he's been doing in the gym. Are you suggesting, George, that this is not a, a good venue for a young fighter to make his debut in with all of these folks here with all of the movement around it? No, I would say not. He <laughs> wasn't to get off on his own. He's doing pretty good, but a lot of the amateurism is showing up like uh, Jim said earlier. Oh, 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 he caught him with a combination. He's going left, right, left, left, right. right. No, they didn't knock him down, though. No, Foreman said that basically, you know, they do all this training in the gym, and then they go out and do something else in the ring. It's like, what do you tell them? Well, that goes to what Mike Tyson says. Everybody's got a plan until they hit, get hit in the face. 
It's like, oh shit, now what? And Calton just all over him now. Left, right, left, right, left, right. He's got him up against the ropes. 30 seconds left in round two. Five seconds left. Hmm. Now you gotta wonder what um, Miller's manager was thinking, setting up up against Terrence Calton, Olympic bronze medalist. Now nobody knew at the time what his career record was gonna be, only that he was the bronze medalist in the Olympics. Back when that actually meant something. But none of those punches is thrown with mean intentions, or at least with professionally mean intentions. Five seconds out. They're somewhere between a slap and a good professional Take punch. Bag up. Oh, he's got a hammer of arm punching. Got his body behind. Ding him. ding. This Round three. Boxing now. It's so easy to fall into that. Yeah, it's going to take a while for Joe Frazier and that group to get him to settle down and turn him over. Once he does, you're going to see some power. Harold Letterman, how do you have this after two rounds? All right, 20 to 18, two rounds, stepping Terrence Crawford. Not a tough fight this morning. The only thing tough about it was should, should Terrence Crawford have gotten a 10 8 round in the second round because he won it so decisively? Victor Miller's left eye is closing up. And Terrence Crawford got a heck of a right hand from Southpaw. Where's that vicious right hook? <laughs> Round three of a scheduled four. A couple of lightweights, a professional debut of Terrence Coughlin, originally from Trenton. Now out of Philadelphia in Joe Frazier's gym wearing the white trunks. Oh, that was a good left hand by Coughlin. Go Terrence Coughlin has ended up all the shots, done most of the damage. He's still the most cautious. It tells you about this guy. He's in and out of here. Boxing. Genuine boxer, no one's gonna change that nature. Well, maybe it's a good combination. A natural, genuine boxer in the Fraser gym where he might pick up some aggression and some uh, power punching technique. Yeah, that's gonna be a real yeah, look, he's going like eat, 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 eat. He's gonna have to you know get a little closer when he faces better fighters. One minute left in round three. Baby than the Joe Price. <laughs> he didn't even baby his son. He was tough on Morris. He keep talking about Marvis Frazier. Marvis wanted very much to please his head. He's on that. He's your head. He's your head. As Miller was backing away. That's what Miller's having all the problems. Even when he back away, they get a lot of rage. He gets slapped with a punch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the announcers are just shut up because this has just gotten boring. <laughs> yeah, they're not really mixing it up right now. Ding, ding, in the round three. All right, so we got, oh, who's this? And you got to remember, so this was the undercard of Bo versus Galata. Bo was the 88 Olympian. All right, ding, ding, round four. Here we go.
Miller's going to have to take a chance now. You just can't hold it back all night. You're going to have to go for a knockout. Well, he's got a shot at counterpunching as long as... Coffin what is Carlton doing? He's like like raising the roof or something like that. ...out there and not pulling it back in a hurry. He's so quick. If you lean back an inch, he seems to protect him with his eyes an inch. You're going to find you just have to rush him and just fight. Yeah, you're going to have to seize the aggression from him. And, of course, that's doubly hard to do against the southpaw because... Coming at you from exactly the opposite angle from what you're used to. Destroys a lot of your reflexes in there. Thompson was even going to the body now. See, now Carlson's trying to win the fight by cruising, but not, you know, running away. See, he, he's leaning back. He's not taking any chances. But at the same time, the other guy's not landing either. Kind of reminds you a tiny bit of the early Brunel Whitaker. Maybe without quite so much natural ring savvy. Well, Sweet Pea was in a class of his own. Don't compare him to Sweet Pea. Often seems to be so conditioned. Not even breathing hard. This could have been a terrible Oh, he's got him in the corner. He's unloading. Not really turning the punches over and committing to the power. Those who yeah, that's the thing. He, he's cruising at this point. He's not trying to knock him out. You train those guys. They've got to make him believe in his power. He has the power, but for some reason, maybe he's done that before and then he's struck out. Well, in the amateurs, you learn that power doesn't pay off as much as the ability to sort of rat a tat tat. Rat a tat tat to your tempo. Hard right hand to the body by Crawford. He doubled up with the right and came across the chin with it. Now he goes back to the body. Yep. Shows a lot of good instincts. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come Ding, ding, end of the fight. Carlton thinks he's won it. He celebrates, and here's the decision. Look at that, he's got a Santa hat on. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was 11 days before Christmas. What was that? And now Michael Blood was ready to right, here, here we go. the fight. Even way at Caesars Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Melvina Latham, Barbara Perez, and Joseph Pasquale all scored the bout. 40 to 35 for the winner by unanimous decision, winning his professional debut, the 1996 Olympic bronze medalist from Toronto. Pennsylvania turns the heat. gets the win by unanimous decision. Yeah, let me shut that off. Now the thing about Carlton, he was a good fighter, but he was never a great fighter. He win an NBA in he would ugh, he would win NABF titles, but he was never in a major serious title contention. So his so he was the one of the guys on this list who's Pro career didn't match the amateur success, other than, you know, the other way around. So, he was good, but he wasn't great. So, and plus, we'll never know if he could face, like, the, the best of the best, because he never did. He never he never faced the, you know, Marco Antonio Barreras or, or Oscar De La Hoya's. You know, he never did. No, he was basically a club fighter his whole career. You know, he beat the guys in front of him, but he never, you know, faced anybody like that. Oh, well. So. At least he took home a bronze medal, which is more going to be said for most of his teammates. So that ends this the edition of Fight Night. I'll see you next time.